Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my mini art talks. It's Janet Mandel. Now, since this year, 2020, celebrates the centennial of the passage of the 19th Amendment, guaranteeing women's suffrage, I thought it would be a great time to talk about Mary Cassatt and her wonderful friend, Louisiane Havemeyer. There are so many connections um, between these two women in terms of the art world, in terms of politics, and uh, I think you'll be very interested in um, in their story. But let's talk about Mary first. She was, as you know, I'm sure, an American Impressionist. She was born in Pennsylvania, but spent most of her adult life in Paris. She was a painter and a printmaker and a collector and an art advisor. She had a long and varied career at a time when women were not really that prominent in the art world. So she was, she was uh, despite the fact that she had this very proper bearing, she was really quite the rebel in her own way. Now she's known for her tender portrayals of mothers and their children, interesting because she was never a mother and never had children herself. But in this particular work that I wanna talk about today, we're absolutely captivated, not so much by the child, but by that sunflower, our eye is really drawn to it. And I wanna give a shout out to Nikki Georgio Georgiopoulos, who is a curator at the National Gallery of Art, who wrote a wonderful essay about this painting, and that kind of inspired me to do this talk. So thank you very much for that, Nikki. Um, now, Louisine Havemeyer, oops, there you go, it's Mary Cassatt, Woman with a Sunflower from about 1905, and it is at the National Gallery. Now, Louisine Havemeyer was a young woman in the 1870s, who, a society woman, a young girl from New York City, and she came with her mother to do her tour of the continent, which young woman, women of her station did back then, and when they were in Paris, she was introduced to Mary Cassatt. And she was quite taken with Mary, and they went to museums together and galleries. And uh, Louisiane wanted to buy a painting, uh, wanted to buy a work of art. And Mary, who, as I said, was an uh, art advisor, told her she should buy this little Degas pastel. And Degas was not that well known back then. Louisiane didn't really like it that much, but she trusted Mary's judgment, and it was a very good thing that she did. Louisiane went on to become a great collector and um, she, this uh, work, which she brought back uh, to America with her, is considered the first Impressionist work of art that came to the United States. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Louisiane in a minute, but first let's take a look back at the painting, but in the context of these wonderful um, um, uh, sunflowers. Now, the sunflower had been the official symbol of an organization called the National American Woman Suffrage Association since way back in 1896. And um, even before that, they had used the sunflower in their um, buttons and, and advertisements, as you can see here. And the sunflower appeared also in all kinds of official and promotional suffrage materials. And uh, particularly in this button here, which I really love that said that was put out in 1904 and says, we want to vote for president in 1904. Because that's of course what the suffragists wanted to do was to be able to vote. And uh, one of these buttons is now at the Museum of the City of New York. Now Mary displayed this symbol of the suffrage movement in her painting. Uh, not accidentally, she was a fierce advocate for women's rights and particularly voting rights. And she not only used her own work to advance this cause, but she also solicited help from her friends in the art world as well. And this painting was among 20 or so paintings that Mary included in a 1915 exhibition to raise money for the suffrage campaign. And she even persuaded Edgar Degas to contribute some of his paintings to the exhibition. Now, I can't say for sure that he knew that it was for women's suffrage. Maybe if he knew, he wouldn't have lent them. And we don't know for sure, but she did persuade him uh, uh, to lend his uh, works to the exhibition. So here is a, is a little uh, card advertising the exhibition. It was staged, as you can see, at the Nerdler Gallery in New York City. 
And um, it was actually the second such fundraiser that Louisine had organized with Mary's help. And um, uh, the first was in 1913, and this one uh, was in 1915. Now, uh, Louisine Havemeyer always um, claimed that her dedication to women's rights and women's suffrage was on account of Mary Cassatt's influence. She uh, recalled a letter from Mary in 1914 that said, work for suffrage. If the world is to be saved, it will be the women who save it. And so using a proceeds from the entry fees, as you can see here, uh, and also the sale of exhibition pamphlets, uh, Havemeyer founded the Women's Suffrage Campaign Fund. And she also moved out of her comfort zone into becoming a speaker about art, as you can see here. Mrs. H.O. Havemeyer will speak briefly on Ms. Cassatt and Degas. So um, there she was standing up uh, in front of a crowd talking about art, which is something that uh, I'm going to tell you one of her, her ancestors later on um, did for a living, actually. Now, Mary was very grateful and impressed that Louisine organized this exhibition, and she wrote to her, my dear, I am so very glad about the exhibition. You deserve all the credit. The time has finally come to show that women can do something. So, um, uh, Louisine Havemeyer became quite an active and effective warrior, much to the chagrin of her children who felt that it was improper for the society matron to be doing what she's doing here, going out and talking to, to large crowds about it. She also participated in the passing of this torch. Uh, from state to state to try to uh, drum up um, support for the women's suffrage, suffrage movement. So uh, um, I think that um, uh, given the, the symbolism of the sunflower in that wonderful painting uh, by Mary Cassatt, it's not um, surprising that uh, Louisine went on to buy this painting the same year of the exhibition, 1915. Um, and uh, uh, kept it for many years, and um, uh, eventually it ended up at the National Gallery of Art. Now we can see from looking at this painting that it is not simply uh, this very affectionate and gentle portrait of the mother and her child. I think when I look at it, I see the child looking into the mirrors, little children would want to do, see themselves, but look at the mother's uh, face as she looks in the mirror. I think the mirror for the mother is more of a symbol of the future, of what is in store for her child in the future. So as she's wearing this sunflower, she's thinking about, is her child going to have the rights that all children should have? And is, her is the future for her child going to be a future that's going to be more just? And I think that's what Mary Cassatt was saying in this painting. And I think today, uh, since voter suppression is certainly part of the political landscape, I think today this battle for voting rights has not really been won yet uh, because not everybody can exercise their right to vote. So I think we have to see Mary Cassatt's and Louisine Havemeyer's legacy um, as something that should inspire us to continue the fight. And uh, <clears throat> I think there's a tremendously interesting connection that flows from Louisiana Havemeyer uh, between the world of art and politics. And that's how I want to end this talk by uh, telling you about. Now, Louisiana had three children and one of her daughters was Electra. And Electra goes on to marry and move to Vermont and she opens the Shelburne Museum of Art with, which, with the, um, uh, um, with a collection of paintings that she has. And um, uh, this is a, a, pa a, a pastel that Mary did of Louisiana and her daughter Electra that is in a private collection. Now, what is the, what is the connection to today? Well, this gentleman here is John Curry Wildmerding, and he is related to Louisiana through her daughter Electra. Uh, from 1977, he served as a senior curator at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and then as its deputy director from 1983 to 1988, and then uh, as a professor of American art at Princeton University. Electra was his grandmother, so Louisine was his great-grandmother. He is a collector. 
He is a uh, curator and he's also an author. He writes about art as well. So you see that the legacy, Louisiane's legacy uh, of art has been passed down to John Curry Wilmerding. Now, um, because they both made tremendous uh, contributions to the art world. Now, in addition, Louisine's other daughter, Adeline Havemeyer, she, uh, this is, and this is um, Mary's pastel of Adeline in a white hat from 1898, and it's at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Now, Adeline marries Peter Hood Ballantyne Frelinghuysen. And if you're from New Jersey like I am, that name will really ring a bell for you because their grandson and then Accordingly, Louisine's great grandson is my former congressman, Rodney Freeling Eisen. So he is carrying on the tradition of Louisine's involvement in politics, just the way John uh, Wilmerding is carrying on the uh, Louisine's tradition of being an important uh, figure in the art world. And then there's one more connection to Adeline. And that is uh, her luxurious summer home was called Twin Oaks, Twin Oaks Mansion in Morristown, New Jersey. And that is now, that building now houses the Morris Museum. And it's actually the, the entrance of the Morris Museum today is here in this new wing that's been built. But the original house, this part of the museum, was the mansion owned by Adeline. And I have been told that the Dodge Room, which inside that, that portion of the museum, uh, that the Dodge Room was the dining room, uh, Adeline and Peter Hall, uh, uh, Ballantyne, Freeling Heisen's dining room. So, I, and the, the, this room, this Dodge Room is where I do my in-person talks at the Morris Museum. So I like to think that since this was their dining room, that Louisine had to have been in that room probably many, many times. So I like to think that when I'm there presenting that perhaps her spirit is kind of floating around in the room, uh, giving me inspiration uh, to, do, to do my art talks. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this little mini art talk about these very two uh, these very proper ladies, um, and they lived as the 19th century was transitioning into the 20th century, ushering in modernism. And I, I hope I've conveyed to you that their actions, if not their appearances, illustrated that they were indeed rebels of their day in their own way. And I hope that we will uh, go out and vote on November uh, 3rd and carry on the tradition of Mary Cassatt and Louisine Havemeyer. So let me just remind you that if you are on Facebook, you can go to that um, little search bar there on the top and put in Janet Mandel Art Talks and uh, sign on. And I put all kinds of interesting things about what's happening in the art world there for people who are on Facebook. I also have a YouTube channel and I hope that you will go there as well. If you put my name again into that search bar, you will get there. And please, when you do subscribe and also hit the bell next to the subscription button and you will get um, little uh, notifications and email that I've uploaded something new. And I think you'll find these very interesting and will keep you busy during these time, this time of lockdown. You uh, will uh, uh, listen to a short presentation. Uh, that you might find illuminating. And also I am on uh, Instagram, Art Talks with Janet. And also I have a web page. You don't have to memorize this long URL. Just put Janet Mandel Art Talks into Google and look for this wonderful logo made by my artist friend, Marilyn Rose. And it has uh, under the schedule button, it has my schedule for the rest of September. And I'll also be putting up my October schedule soon. Almost all of these talks are online for now. Many of them are free. Several of them are for adult schools that really need your support. So I hope you'll come uh, to some of those talks. Again, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you'll come back soon and see another mini art talk. Take care, stay safe, wear your masks, and vote on November 3rd. Bye-bye now.